Why are there so many ugly additions? What makes an addition look right, especially for a period house? One answer is to have it look like it's always been there. And a good way to do this is to use some time-tested ideas and practices, that is, traditional addition patterns. Hi, I'm Mark Hewitt. And I'm Gordon Bach. And for the next few minutes, we're going to explain one of the ideas for successful additions from our book, The Vintage House. Subordinate Title, Subordination. <clears throat> People have been adding on to houses for generations, and often in the same collections of ways. And this is what makes this traditional, these traditional addition patterns useful for us today. Not only do they look right because they are familiar, they also have the benefit of having been time-tested by the trial and error laboratory of generations of builders and users. These building patterns and ideas have been used again and again because they are successful, efficient, effective, and pleasing ways to add space to an existing house. Traditional addition patterns fall into several classic groups, which we've all seen, whether we remember them or not. And we'll explore these further in future later edition videos. But what they all have in common as fundamental principles is that, as a fundamental principle that makes them work is the idea of subordination. Subordination can mean several things. Sure, we have subordinated this whole house by totally reducing its scale, making it a miniature. But in additions, the subordination does not have to be as drastic as this. In historic examples, additions are traditionally subordinated by position, that is, simply by putting them on a secondary facade of the house. We've all seen this, the wing that extends off one side, or even more subordinate, off the back of the house. Kitchen L's, which were often added when cook stoves became common in the mid-19th century, are just this kind of addition. You didn't have to be an architect to know this was a good idea, or understand why it worked. Subordinating an addition away from the primary, that is the front, facade of the house, preserves the visual prominence and identity of the original building, and avoids upstaging it. It's an idea that still works today, and in fact is strongly advocated by most historic re review authorities, including the National Park Service. The second common way to subordinate an addition is to make its roof line lower than the main original house. Even when the volume of the addition approaches that of the main house, if the roof line is lower, the main house still reads as dominant and the addition is secondary in keeping with its actual nature as a later part of the house. If, however, the roof line of the addition is the same height as the main house, it can appear to the passerby as attempting to overpower the main house, or simply as poorly thought through and out of control. It can also create mechanical problems with raw water runoff. While talented architects can sometimes make this work, Large additions that share the same roof height with the main house run the risk of obliterating the identity of the original house. Even more problematic is the case when the addition rises over the roof of the, of the original house, sometimes with drastic results. Comical results. The third common, the third common but subtle way to subordinate an addition is with a setback. Similar to having a lower roof line, if, an addition, if a side addition avoids being flush with the front facade of the house, but instead is stepped back, even by a few inches, it will read as secondary and help preserve the prima, primacy of the original block of the house. In fact, the shadow line produced by just a few inches helps make the setback visually effective. We've all seen this kind of thing in so-and-so, so-and-so. Good example here. Lastly, and even more subtle, additions can be subordinated by the choice of materials. 
though there are historic exceptions to the contrary. In many cases, additions were built with materials that were less high style or more budget conscious than those used on the main house. Classic examples would be wood siding used to clad an addition to a stone house, or wood shingle roofing added later to a building with slate. Today we might use asphalt shingles instead of wood, or plain three-tab shingles to be subordinate to architectural shingles. Even when the surface area of the addition walls or roof is comparable to that of the main house, this choice of a lesser materials can help to subordinate the addition visually and allow it to read as secondary.